The Italian company Fagioli works all over the world, providing heavy lifting services for both commercial marine and land operations. Fagioli and Fincantieri have taken on a massive lift project together to stretch a cruise liner. While jumboization sounds simple in theory, lifting and transporting these massive loads is a complicated job. Fagioli became involved in the jumboization process that consists of cutting the ship in half in two sections. One of those parts was then supported by the Fagioli skidding system that proceeded to move it 28 meters. This task was combined with another lifting system, the SPMTs, to insert the segment between the two extremities. Once this additional segment was added, the part of the ship that had been skidded 28 meters was then moved back. Four days after the ship was cut in half, the Fagioli skid shoes began their slow work. Engineers made sure that the skid shoes were working at the same speed, so as to provide an even force along the whole hull. It took six hours for a gaping hole to appear on the ship where the new segment could be slipped in over the next day. When the cut was completed, we began operations and took the weight of the ship on the skid shoes and the bow of the ship was lifted. With 22 skid shoes with a thousand ton capacity each, in all, the Fagioli skidding system lifted 15,000 tons. The two most critical technologies that Fagioli provided for the jumboization project were the skid shoes and the SPMT transportation and lifting machines. SPMT stands for Self-Propelled Modular Transporter. They are specialized trailers that allow for the distribution of heavy weights over a large area. They are used worldwide for moving oversized non-detachable superstructure cargoes. They have a powerful engine and hydraulic pumps and must have fast response for synchronized steering and lifting. Both systems that we've utilized in our operations here, the skid shoes and the SPMTs, guarantee all of the six degrees of freedom so they allow obviously the horizontal advancement, the transverse movement and also, as we've said before, vertical lift. SPMTs like these are widely used all over the world for this ability to position heavy loads with all six degrees of movement. It's one of the few technologies that can position these loads in tight spaces. A single operator can control the SPMTs, lifting and lowering heavy loads vertically as well as moving them forward in reverse and side to side. On top of all that, they allow for the rotation with respect to the three axes. All the different directions of movement are covered by the systems we are using. The purpose of all this is to make sure we can align the additional section with the MSC ship's sections with millimetric precision. SPMTs can carry a load of over 10 metric tons per square meter. This ability to hold a mass distributed over a large area is crucial when transporting loads so heavy they can crush the ground and crack the concrete underneath. We can move huge structures offloading very little weight onto the ground, so keeping within the boundaries of what the surface can sustain. Although the SPMTs can take a uniform weight distributed across a large area, they also have the ability to be taken apart so that each axle is its own individual unit. The separate units can be locked together from the front and the back 
to build an individual train-like transportation system. Or they can be locked side by side to allow for extra strength and stabilization. The SBMTs can be placed together, both one in front of the other and also side by side. For today's operations, we can put together 80 axles. The weight of the new section was too large for the SPMTs to be able to move it, so we chose the skidding system, utilizing the skid shoes. Meanwhile, the additional segment had a relatively low weight, so we could use the SPMTs alone. The MSC Opera sits in the dry dock of the bustling Italian port city of Palermo. The ship has been cut and the bow moved forward 28 meters. However, before Andrew Tozo gives the order to insert the new section, the yard takes advantage of the gap in the ship to fill it with fittings that otherwise would be too large to be inserted through the existing doors and portholes. An extraordinary refit is underway while the ship waits for its extra length of hull. The nave is constructed by the ship consists and is constructed as an iron, or rather a steel structure, and inside we find the fittings. So when the passengers arrive, they don't see the frame. They just see the carpets and go into their cabins. The objects that we put in the ship are mostly small objects, so they can be brought aboard the ship through any normal door or temporarily removed window, which is easy. Many of the ship's rooms are part of boxes that can be pre-built and pre-loaded to keep construction on the ship at a minimum. Then when we think about the boxes, such as the bathroom boxes, when the passengers enter, they'll have toilets, baths and sinks. These are built out of fiberglass and are put together on land. The yard inserts oversized items such as bathroom boxes at this stage. But even if other bulky units need to be mounted after the ship has been sealed shut, several different methods can be attempted. Here we have two possibilities. The first possibility, if we're doing an enlargement, is to see how much we can load when the three blocks of the ship are separate. If this is impossible, we'll make a temporary opening in the ship's hull. We'll punch holes in the ship's hull to load the material. The new section, prefabricated with all the utilities already installed, sat on eight massive trailers ready to be slipped in. Each trailer had 80 wheels that could pivot independently 180 degrees. The SPMTs could also lift the new section to ensure millimetric precision while sliding it in. The skid shoes had moved the bow forward 28 meters enough for the amazing SPMT trailers to slide the new segment into the new space. Slowly, the massive wheels of the trailers began to move. Then, after a few meters, they rotated, bringing the new section in line with the rest of the ship. Everything had been pre-calculated. Like a gigantic tight curve, an error of judging distance could leave the new section stuck on the corner of the cut ship. Then the ship needed to be pulled back together again. Once again, the Fadjoli skid shoes began their Herculean task of moving the ship's bow back to where the stump section had been inserted. Once again, the operation had to be carefully monitored so that the skid shoes moved at the same speed, uniformly shifting the section to connect with the rest of the ship with millimetric precision. Here the hydraulic elevators came into play to bring the edges of the sliced beams and hull to perfectly connect with the new segment. 
How do we attach two metal plates together? With the welder, obviously. But it could be an electrode or with the wire, depending on the technique being used. What's the maximum distance between these two plates that I can physically weld together? Only a few millimeters. So imagine cutting a ship that, as we've said earlier, is 28 meters wide with a height of 50 meters from the bottom to the 11th deck with a margin of error of just a few millimeters. In order for the welder's bead to connect each separate piece of metal, both pieces must be close together. The closer together, the cleaner and the stronger the welder's line will be. Obviously, the hull must be watertight, so the welds must be perfect all the way round the ship. Here in the bustling port city of Palermo, Fincantieri shipyard workers are busy working on the jumboization of the MSC Opera. Now that the ship is once again a single unit, the furnishings and final utilities have to be completed. Once the whole of the ship is reconnected, that's to say the three parts of the ship, the bow of the ship, the new section and the stern. So once the hole and the decks have been put back together, we have to reconnect the plumbing, the electrical wires, and we have to test these systems that were taken apart due to the cut. The ship has been stretched with surgical precision, and now the workers can get on board and begin turning it into a functioning cruise liner again. The scars of recent surgery are visible, but soon the ship will get a new paint job as well. Most passengers will never know the cruise liner they are on was once a miniature version of itself. As the cruise industry grows and the ships get bigger, vital questions have arisen about the safety of thousands of passengers inhabiting these massive floating hotels far from the seashore. The second problem with these ships is that they are created, uh, designed to keep you uh, shopping on board, to keep you gambling on board, to keep you entertained and, and using the inside of the vessel. And so it becomes a labyrinth in an accident. Uh, these uh, ships uh, become a trap. The new hydraulic and electrical systems must be tested while the ship is in the dry dock before they are tested at sea. If the systems fail at sea, it could be very difficult for the company to return the ship to the dry dock to continue work. The shipbuilder's responsibility is to ensure the structural solidity of the ship, says the Fincantieri yard director, Filippo Otto. The plant is tested in the dock before the sea tests to ensure that the ship's main plant works. The structural aspect of enlarging a ship is the most interesting part of the process because we have to think about how we will be able to enlarge something and make it function as though it were originally built to that length. In the sea test, we have to verify the maneuverability of the ship which has changed due to its having been lengthened from its original size. The propulsion and control systems are tested. Speed tests are carried out to see how the ship behaves after the lengthening process. The ship returns to the dock, we complete the last activities, and the ship is delivered. There is still much work to be done to make the MSC Opera into a viable seagoing vessel. And only many weeks later is the ship ready for service. Fincantieri, meanwhile, has found a fast, low-cost solution to keeping cruise companies competitive by stretching ships and increasing the number of passengers they can carry. Heavy lift and massive naval engineering are probably the least known part of the cruise business. But they are a reliable support partner when it comes to keeping the industry afloat. 
noi andiamo ad aggiungerci un pezzo in più e quindi è, nece è necessariamente tutti We're adding another piece, so all the forces that the sea exerted on the original structure will inevitably change. So the structural verifications are definitely the most challenging aspect of the process. So how did we commence? We tried to keep the dimensions of the new section such that we can minimize the changes on the existing ship. In modo tale da minimizzare l'impatto sulla nave esistente. The thickness and amount of steel on the new stump section had to be enough to withstand the stress exerted upon it from the weight of the stern and the bow on either side. Then we made the structural modifications of the existing ship. We need to ensure that the new modified ship will have the same structural integrity as the ship had before. Before the ships of the Renaissance program can be used in service, they must undergo a series of sea trials to prove their strength and seaworthiness. This whole process, from the time the ship is put in the dry dock until we can send it back out again, lasts nine weeks. The stretched MSC Opera cruise liner will take to the sea as a completely rejuvenated ship, ready to take on the fierce competition. MSC Cruises has only 5% of the world's cruise markets, but now can offer bigger ships at a fraction of the cost of building a new one. After the enlargement of the ship, she will have an added capacity of about 500 passengers. So basically, the owner of the ship, after four enlargement processes, is able to embark as many passengers as if he had a new ship. It's a procedure that obviously brings results, but the tolerance or margin of error is very small. This whole jumboization process of the four ships in the series cost 200 million euros overall. This includes the cost of engineering for all four ships and customized work that needs to be done specifically on each ship. Overall, the project costs 200 million euros. The cruise ship industry may be controversial, but the technology behind jumboization is truly remarkable. The lifting and moving of tens of thousands of metric tons and cutting metal ships that are 50 meters tall utilizes the most modern of technologies. Recycling ships to make them brand new gives them added capacity to hold hundreds of extra passengers. That saves years of work and hundreds of millions of euros in resources. Although the tourism business will always need new cruise ships, undoubtedly the process of putting these ships under the knife will continue. Almost certainly there will be more jumboization.